I'm Althea Malarkey, Scenic Hudson, and with me today I have Assemblywoman Carrie Warner, 113th District up in Washington, Saratoga County. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Althea. How are you? I'm good. At home, I can see you're at home as well. I am indeed. You might see my cat come by. She she has enjoyed participating in Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I actually had to lock mine away because she gets a little bit nosy. So we're here today to sort of talk about, you know, I know that we're locked in right now, but that doesn't mean we can't still continue on with the business of the state. And I want to say thank you. What you guys did under some really extreme circumstances was really remarkable. Just want to say thank you. Well, thank you. I think that uh, all of this is a team effort and uh, you know and certainly getting the budget done under under these kinds of circumstances was I, I think a situation no one would like to repeat but everybody was glad we were able to get it done um, but it was really you know it, it is everybody who cares about issues working together um, to make the right things happen and, and I think with respect to the environment certainly the right things happened this time. Well, the environment's obviously what we're here to talk about today, and specifically Earth Day. I can't, I can't remember Earth Day 1970 because I was only three years old at the time, so I can't tell you what I was doing then. Do you remember what you were doing on Earth Day 1970? As a matter of fact, I can. Okay. Uh, so I would have, I was in second grade. I would have just turned eight years old. Um, and I remember so clearly that at my uh, grammar school, we planted a tree for the very first Earth Day. And we all stood around it like an assembly and we sang songs and, uh, and I remember it really clearly. So I have a, a, um, a strong connection to the first Earth Day. And, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, we're going to be celebrating Earth Day on April 22nd, as you know, with some interviews with some of the leadership. But we were sort of wondering to talk to some of the other environmental champions, and you honestly are one of the environmental champions. I almost want to leave my part of the Hudson Valley just to move up to be in your district, Carrie. Oh you've, done some, you've done some pretty remarkable things. And one thing I, I note about you is you're very good at being able to put the environment together with business. Investing in the environment means investing in jobs. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So I think the, you know, probably the very best example we can we can use is um, the cleanup of the Hudson River. Um, you know, the the um, it was industry that destroyed the Hudson River, um, and 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 the cleanup of the Hudson River will, I believe, open up opportunities for. Uh, existing businesses as well as new businesses. You know, mm -hmm. for years, I mean, the, the origin of the canal system, the Champlain Canal in particular, um, was about transporting um, people and goods um, from one part of the state to the other um, and, and, and moving things north to, to connect with the St. Lawrence Seaway and, and, and Canada. And, and over time, other forms of transportation have became, became more. Um, lower cost and more interesting. But what we know is that to ship something, if, particularly if it's a heavy good, um, it is often much less expensive and, yes. and much less impactful on um, the environment. We're not putting, you know, you're not spewing fume, diesel fumes uh, on the roadways. It's, it's also better for our communities because we're not breaking down the roads. The, the reality is we don't have enough money to maintain our roads and bridges. And if we can take heavy trucks off of those roads and bridges by moving them onto barges, it's a it is a it's a win for everybody. So, you know, opening cleaning up the Hudson River, making it possible to once again dredge the Champlain Canal to a navigable depth, has the possibility to open it up to commercial shipping once again, um, which would be a benefit to all of the businesses up and down our section of the Hudson River. But even if we can't get to a navigable depth, cleaning up the Hudson River opens up the possibility of additional tourism on that canal way. So imagine a river cruise um, like you, like they advertise it, of course, these days, who wants to talk about cruises? But imagine a river cruise like they have in the, on the um, rivers in Europe, 
but now we're doing it in the Champlain Canal. We're doing it on the upper Hudson River. And we're bringing people to taste wines at our vineyards and beers at our breweries and, and sample the great cheeses and food products that we have to go pick apples at Saratoga Apple. You know, there are so many interesting things that happen up and down the Hudson River so many interesting spots that people don't normally get to because they're kind of off the beaten track. But on a, on a river cruise, you'd get mm. there. So, like, so there's tourism opportunities that come out of it. And it's all because we insist that the river be cleaned up, that it be possible to turn it back into uh, a place for tourism, a place for commercial shipping, and then also turn it back into a place for fishing. You know, to, we used to be, we used to have a great and vibrant fishing industry. And I think we would like to have our, uh, we'd like to see that happen again, but we'd also like to see subsistence um, mm -hmm. fishermen be able to go back to the river in a, and do it in a safe and healthy way. So um, I think there's, I think that's an example of how investing in the environment is really has dividends in terms of creating jobs and stimulating economic activity. And, and, I, and I think that in, uh, too often, the rhetoric around the environment gets, gets distorted. And, and we stop, and we start thinking of it as investing in the environment or investing in industry. And I don't think it has to be that way. I think we can think about these as, as being complementary. I really like that, and and I know that we're really appreciative of your championship for the on the cleanup of the Hudson River. Interestingly, too, with um, talking about investments in in the environment, investments in agriculture really pay off, especially in your district as well as districts down in the, down in the Hudson Valley. That's business for New York tourism and agriculture, and all of that depends on investing in the environment. Absolutely, and and. You know, I think uh, the the headlines this this week and last week have um, have really zeroed in on how important having a local supply of mm -hmm. food that cuts across all the commodity groups is that when we are dependent on a global supply chain to or even a national supply chain to meet our basic food requirements, uh, that puts our societies at risk. And so I think that there's there's never been a better time to make the case that we in, in New York need to continue to invest in agriculture from making sure that those farmers who are ready to retire find a new generation of farmer or somebody who's perhaps this is the first time they're farming that wants to take on that land and keep it in production um, to investing in um, uh, developing new uh, new varietals that grow well in our part mm -hmm. of, the, of the country. Um, investing in um, controlled environment agriculture, so the high tunnels and uh, greenhouses as a way to extend our growing season so that our weather doesn't impact our ability to meet the, the food needs of our community. Of thinking about um, how can we, uh, how can we, what kind of farming methods will best protect the the soil because good quality soils are what we have here um, but we want to make sure that we're not doing we're not supporting farming techniques that destroy that and and between um, Cornell University and the Cornell Cooperative Extensions um, they are really champions for soil health and on adopting techno uh, techniques for doing this so I think that there's you know, agriculture is such an important part of our economy and always has been. I think it, it, we, we now understand, based on this, this COVID experience, how very valuable it is to have strong, viable farms here producing food that meets the needs for our community. A number of years ago, I read a statistic that said that New York grows enough food to feed 40% of its population. Oh. 40%, that's all. So a mad so so mm -hmm. that's how we create a scenario where, if You're dependent, if a, a processing plant in the Midwest closes down, we're going to see shortages in our stores. So we need to be really thinking about how do we ensure that the land stays in agricultural production, that farmers can make a, a, a decent living um, farming the land, um, and and I am hopeful that 
over the coming years, we will see um, a, a, a stronger shift, both at the state level and at the national level, to really building a, uh, a stronger agricultural uh, system and economy here in New York State. Well, I'm glad to see that you're still thinking about like what we need to do once we get past this COVID crisis. And I know that you, like many of your colleagues, are really working very hard to address the immediate needs of the people in your district. But I'm curious, you've been an Assemblywoman since 2014. What is one of your most best earth environment policies that you have fostered and what is one that you would like to see perhaps maybe agriculture could you address the first question first about what you're most proud of yeah i think um i think certainly the the uh, the agricultural initiatives that i have supported are probably among uh, my most proudest accomplishments so um from uh, uh from stimulating ag tourism by addressing the liability issues that uh, farmers brought to my attention to um, uh, supporting farm wineries and farm breweries um, to the Farmland for a New Generation initiative that I worked on with the American Farmland Trust. Um, all of these things, I think, have really helped move um, agriculture in the 113th Assembly District forward. Um, and I look forward to doing more of that um, because I think that there's, we have such richness in the scope of commodities that we can produce in New York State. Yeah, um, I agree. And, and, and I really focus on um, how, do we, how do we help transition the technologies that Cornell is working on? How do we, how do we bring that forward? So how do we think about, how can we think about um, controlled environment agriculture and transitioning that? Um, how can we, uh, you know, through grants for more high tunnels and um, bringing, um, uh, introducing students to some of this agriculture technology um, one a uh, number of years ago, I secured a uh, a grant through the SAM program for our um, local um, uh, FFA programs, and we have six in my district, um, and they all shared a five hundred thousand dollar grant to invest in new technologies for learning about agriculture and um, and. Wow. and and setting themselves up for a career in agriculture. Um, so all of them have uh, now grow towers where they grow lettuce and greens um, uh, indoors all year round. And then they harvest it and they give it to the cafeterias um, to serve uh, at lunchtime. Um, so they're, they're starting to understand about consumer taste and how to, um, how to grow in a, it, it indoors to be able to provide um, fresh greens all year long so that we're not dependent on shipping greens from California and Mexico to meet the needs of our communities. I can say if they wanted to offer a webinar on how to do that right now, they'd probably have a lot of people chiming in to watch it. I bet they would. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, Carrie, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking time to talk to us today. And is there any uh, uh, last thoughts you want to share with us regarding Earth Day? Um, only that I think it's so, I think it's great that we are still 50 years later um, highlighting and remembering how important the, the earth is to us and that, that we, are, uh, we are connected as a system and that as the health of the earth goes, so does the health of the beings that live on the earth. And whether that's okay. protecting habitats or cleaning the air or cleaning the water, um, it's, so, it's such an important and ongoing um, activity that we have to do. And I want to thank you and the other environmental groups that operate in New York for continuing the focus, for being, being targeted on, the, on, the, on the, where we can make a difference and what do we need to do to make our earth stronger and therefore our communities stronger.